Hi there, this is Bob from Insidium. On today's Top Tip Tuesday, we're going to be taking a cached particle simulation and I'm going to show you how we can access the particle velocity information at render time. This is via a Redshift node and it means we can get some really nice sophisticated rendering tricks even though our particle colour is already baked into the cache. It's a really important and powerful technique. So let's get that clock started and we'll begin. Here's our cached scene then and we've got this really cool kind of melting look with our particles melting then solidifying then melting again and they're developing along and looking pretty nice. If we go to our render view we've got this set up with a redshift light let's switch that light on now you can see we've got one redshift area light lighting this scene and you can dig into this scene to have a look at the settings but we've got an emitter here our emitter has got a redshift object tag on and we're in custom objects mode and we're referencing this cube platonic and pyramid here they are in our scene okay so now we're going to create a material let's go to our material double click and we're going to put this standard redshift material now when you're instancing geometry on the particles you have to put the material on the geometry not the particles so with this standard redshift material because it has reflections switched on by default you can see we're getting these glinting reflections on our particles which are creating these bits of geometry so what we want to do is create a glowing effect now often you would do this using particle color you'd simulate the particles and you'd color them according to their speed so the fastest ones were white slowest ones were black but we have obtained this cool melting effect by coloring the particles using a random noise so we don't have that data in the color but we're still able to access that speed data Here's how. We're going to open up our Redshift node editor. And let's just put our output and standard node up here. We are going to be using these in a bit. But we need to get the velocity data from our particles and convert it into speed data. So let's double click. The way we get it, it's part of one of the user data nodes. And velocity data is a vector data type. So let's get a vector user data and we need to give it the correct the attribute name we find that in the presets particle artists and look velocity XP let's click on that so if I solo this node let's just go forward a frame and there is our velocity information now this is giving us the movement of the particles or the kind of directional movement on all axes and also the speed and we can't use that we just need to get this speed data how fast they are doesn't matter what direction they're going it's just the speed and we want that to be a value between 0 and 1 black and white so this there's lots of clever maths to convert this but actually there's a node that does that all for us which is great so let's double click it's in the maths nodes in the vector maths and look vector length this is the node that will do it for us all we need to do is pipe in our output into the input and now it's converted that into zero to one speed data but we need to tell it what the range is what's the slowest and fastest moving particle we do that let's double click type in range we need a change range node put this as the input let's solo this node and the old speed minimum is zero that's right stationary but we need to put what the maximum speed is here and we can find that in this scene if we go to our speed modifier this was used in the cache and look we clamped the maximum speed to 70 centimeters so that's brilliant let's just put 70 in here and now you'll see yes look we've got that perfect range now this particle uh, we're getting that color data and it is the speed of those particles brilliant so what we want to do is use this to drive the illumination of these particles but we want a bit more control we can do that by um, putting this through a ramp so let's double click and we'll type in ramp now we're going to use a scalar ramp for this one which gives us a really good spline control so let's put the output of our change range into the alt input and now what we're able to do if I solo my scalar ramp we can add a contrast curve to our curve of our scalar ramp 
and we're going to darken that down so only the really fast bits are going to be light and it just means we're going to get more of the nice kind of glinting dark material and a bit less of the glowy material brilliant so now that we have got that we're going to use this to drive that emission of light and you can do this in a number of ways but i like to use the old incandescent node let's bring that in this is a material and what we want to do is in the settings we're going to set the mode to temperature so it's using this temperature to color them and if we reduce this let's solo that incandescent if we reduce this it goes from white hot and it starts to get these different kind of temperature ranges so something like that and then what we want to do with this intensity multiplier we want to feed in our scalar ramp data so it's most intense where the white so how we do that is go to the setting that we want to use as an input hold control click here and there is our input and now i can pipe that into there solo this incandescent node yes now we're getting close to what we want so let's mix these two materials now this incandescent with our standard shiny uh, redshift one which gives us these nice reflections and we need double click we need a blender node and it's a material blender let's take that the material blender needs to go into the surface now and we're going to have our standard material as the base material let's put it in base color and we're going to have our incandescent as the layer one color and then let's go to our settings what we need to do the blend color we need to put it on full so on white but then we need to activate sorry we need to activate additive blending let's click on that and yes so now look we have got our reflections and our bright lava finally i want this to be a bit stronger so what we can do is create a strength slider let's move these nodes out let's double click we need a maths multiplier mull node let's bring that in this is going to be our strength slider so let's put this into the input one and this into our incandescent intensity and then this input two becomes our strength slider so one is what it was before but look we can double the strength two and now we've got a more glowing white hot look brilliant so obviously you can add glow to this um, but that is our basic material setup so we've been able to access that velocity data to create this cool glowing lava like material and when animated this technique looks really nice